Lord, this is a story for the books. If you guys have not heard about this story, y'all are in for a treat. This is a very confusing, bizarre, interesting, and sad story. Before we get into this story, I do want to let you guys know that this video is only to report on very, very, very public news. I mean, this is all out there. You can find this information anywhere. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere in your everyday life, in the grocery store, in your home, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. <music> my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, uh, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having a very, very amazing day and a happy, happy, happy new year. So before we get into today's video, before I tell you guys a story, before we have some discussions, I do want to let you know that if you have not heard me talk about it a million and a billion gazillion times, January 20th, 2020 on Bravo, the show Spy Games will be airing that I am in. It is a competition, spy games, espionage type of show, something that I, oh, oh, oh. Just wait till y'all see it. Bless it, Jesus. <laughs> if you guys are out of the U.S., I am trying to find out how you guys can watch it. But if you are in the U.S., make sure you set your DVR so you do not miss it. Also, if you guys do not know, I have a second channel, Casually Christina. I do things much more casually over there if you guys want to check that out. And I also have a Patreon, and I will leave that linked down below. So, okay, now that the announcements are over. Today's story is about a young woman named Shayna Huber. Some of y'all guys know this story. Now this is very interesting because there are a lot of people that love Shayna and there are a lot of people that dislike Shayna, okay? This was a young college student. She is incredible. In very, very, very smart. Super high IQ. Like finished her college with her bachelor's and was going to school to get her master's degree. I mean, this girl had it going on. The only problem is she was dating this young, really good looking lawyer that she decided to take out of this world, okay? She shot him six times. And a lot of people are comparing Shayna to the Jodi Aries case. If you guys want me to cover that, let me know that as well. If you wanna hear my opinions and me to do a story on that. But we're just gonna focus on this. And I was really drawn to this, mainly because of some of the things that she has done after she took her boyfriend out of this world. We are gonna be talking about the whole story as well as reviewing the interview, which if you guys have not seen her confession interview, well. I don't know if you'd call it an interview. She was basically talking to herself. We're going to do that here today. So the story goes as follows. Young, beautiful Shayna met her boyfriend, Ryan, and they fell in love. Well, she fell in love. I don't really know if he was quite in love or not, but they dated for a while. Ryan was a lawyer. He had his own law firm and he was like doing the dang thing. As a matter of fact, I saw somewhere where at one point in time he was triple enrolled. He was going for three different degrees at one time. Like you can only imagine how smart this man is. Anybody that's ever been to college, you know that even getting one degree is a lot of papers to write, studying and all of that. But to do three three degrees at one time, that's quite impressive. So he had his own law firm, come from a really, really good family, had a really good upbringing and was loved. He had a lot of people that supported him. He even had like a fan base. He had a great business and he had it going on. But with that, of course, comes a lot of beautiful women that wanted to be with Ryan as well. But when he got with Shayna, she fell head over heels in love with him. They were doing all kinds of stuff together. She would go to his house, she'd walk his dog, she'd clean his house. You know, they'd get into like shooting things. Like he was really big into like having his own thingies and, and going to the range and stuff like that. 
and they just had this relationship. Now, the thing about Shayna is she was a bit obsessive from what I could find. Like, to every one text message that Ryan would send Shayna, she would send him a hundred. When all of this happened, they said that they had like 50,000 text messages that they went through the phones and found that she just text, 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 text all the time, wanted to know where he's at, what he's doing, this, that, or whatnot. Well, eventually, he decided he did not want anything to do with her anymore. He wanted to move on. Well, she would beg him back. She'd go back to him. She'd cry. She'd put this guilt trip on him, and he'd go back with her. And then this happened back and forth, which a lot of young relationships are like that. You guys know a lot of the times, not always, that when you're young and in love or young in a relationship, you'll get together, break up, get together, break up, get together, break up. It happens, okay? That's not too much out of the ordinary. Now, I don't know about sending 100 text messages at a time. Now, I ain't never done that, but I'm not here to judge her text messaging skills. So this last time she showed up at Ryan's house and he had a date to go out that night with this beautiful beauty queen that was Mrs. Ohio. So he was getting ready to go out with her that night and Shayna shows up at his house. Now, according to Shayna, she was afraid for her life that night and that he threw her against the couch and he was going for the weapon and she says she picked it up and she shot him. Now, before we go into any more of this, let's watch her interrogation video together, okay? So we're gonna go over this, we're gonna review it, and we're gonna chit chat about it. And I just picked up the gun, and in the middle of him doing something with his arm or saying something crazy, I shot him. And I thought, Oh my God, what have I done? You know? And he was laying with his face on the table, like twitching. Now, after she shot him, she called her mother first to tell her what happened. Then she called 911. I'm not going to play the 911 recording for you guys, but you can find it easily on YouTube. And she was freaking out. She was panicking. She was just talking constantly, nonstop. And she was waiting for the police to get there. When the police got there and they found his body laying there, she went with the police officers, obviously, to do an interview or an interrogation or to hear her side of the story of what happened. Now, the weird thing is, according to what the media and every everybody is saying and what you guys are going to see here in a minute they weren't even really interrogating her in the room she just started talking and did not stop from what people are saying she talked for three hours non-stop in the interrogation room without them even prying and trying to get things out of her now we're not going to listen to the three hours worth of interrogation but we're going to listen to about five minutes we're going to stop and stop in between we're going to talk a little bit about it and then we'll talk afterwards okay so let's do this i thought oh my god what have i done you know and he was laying with his face on the table like twitching and so, I knew he was going to die a very slow and painful death. I knew he was already dead, you know, I, within the next 20 seconds. So in the next two minutes, I knew he was going to be dead. And he was in a lot of pain. He was twitching, he was moaning, but he was ultimately dead. And so, I shot him enough times to kill him. So that he wouldn't suffer at that point, which was a few more times. Okay. <laughs> So she said, and I don't mean to laugh. This is not a, this is not a funny subject because somebody lost his life and parents lost their child and friends lost their friend. And it, it's, it's not a funny matter, but so she says she, 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 she fired one time and he was twitching and she fired again and then she fired a few more times. Like, okay, let's keep going. I shot him. I think I shot him twice. Thought he was completely dead and he was laying there still twitching and making noises and I shot him in the head I probably should have left it there but I knew he was going to die mm -hmm. or have a very deformed face 
and you were concerned. And I knew, well, no, he would have died. He was already dying. He was already, he was dying. But I just walked around the table and shot him where I knew he would die immediately. It's fast. His obsession with guns killed him. You know, I would have never, I'm so Democrat, I would have never touched a gun in my life until I dated him. I'm so, what? Oh, you guys. <sighs> okay, let's keep going. I'm not your typical partner. No, I'm not the one that you see on the He said, you're just a hillbilly from Kentucky. And I am. I guess I, that's the hillbilly came out of me. <laughs> The hillbilly came out of me? What does that mean? What does that mean, you guys? I, I okay, let's keep going. Uh, yeah, I would I would have to agree with you there on that girlfriend. It's probably the worst thing that you've done. Um, okay, let's keep going. But I feel like it's bad that I like part of me doesn't feel bad about it. And that part of me does. You know what I mean? Like, and part of me is like. Hit me, through me. I personally do not understand that. <clears throat> now, now know that I've never been in this situation before and I never want to be in this situation, but like, I just could not imagine not feeling bad. Like I would lose my mind if I took a life, whether, you know, that person, you know, like no matter what it is, like I just could not imagine, you know, like I, if I have a conversation with somebody that I think, something that I said offended somebody, I'm thinking about it over and over and over again. You know what I mean? Like I just could, I can't imagine that train of thought. And when I saw this, I was wondering like, is she mentally sound? Like, you know, is she, does she have some serious, serious mental disorders? Now it does come out in court later on that she does have borderline personality disorder, that she was examined and all of that. But I know people, I have friends that have, you know, BPD and they they don't do things like this so I don't ever want to say that that is a reason there are people that have BPD they take care of their self they live with it it's hard it's a struggle it's an extra hurdle to go through life and yes I do also know people that have BPD that do not take care of their self and they have much more struggles in their life they have hard times having relationships and friends and you know stuff like that but you know that to me is not a is not enough to say, okay, for her to have this train of thought. Like, I'm so confused watching this. So let's keep going. You just don't treat a woman like that. I was like in high school and she was a convicted felon. She told me that the women that she got, she was, she went for cocaine. She told me that the women that she got along with in jail or prison are the women that were there because they had killed her husband. And said that hell has no fury like a woman's for. She giggled after she said that, like, <sighs> you guys, that's just, I could not imagine being the mother of this guy and watching this. Like that has to be even more painful, like a, a, another dagger to the heart to listen. You know, I think she told a lot then when she said that, hell has no fury like a woman's scorn. I think right there she she told a lot. She's, you know, let's keep going. I believe it until now. <laughs>
checking out. She's doing these ballerina dance moves as she's singing. Um, it's, just, it's a little bizarre, you guys. It's a little bizarre. Now, I saw in other interviews where she was in that same room the same day where she was telling the person that was sitting in there with her that he always wanted a nose job and that she gave him the nose job that he always wanted or something like that. But she also made a strange addition to what she described happened, referencing a nose job she said Post and wanted. Right, I'm which was another bizarre statement. Like I said, this this interview, inter I don't even know what you would call it. It's not even really an interrogation because they're not interrogating her. She's just saying all of this stuff. And it's like, I'm sorry. You got like, she, t I just, it, it's so bizarre because I've seen other interviews with her and she's so incredibly intelligent, very well spoken, uses these really big, like very intelligent words. But then these interviews like this, she just, to me, she doesn't seem like, I don't know how to say this without sounding mean, but she doesn't seem completely mentally sound. She's out of touch with reality in some ways. Now, that is by no means an excuse for this at all. I have seen, personally, women get obsessed. Men too, but I have personally seen and experienced the obsession of women, single white female types of things, where they get obsessed with a person, whether it's another woman or a man, and they just cannot let it go. They're like obsessive. They want to be with this person. They want to talk about this person. They want to talk about them on social media. They want to, you know, do all of this stuff because they just, they're obsessed with this person. And that is scary. And that's what I feel like happened in this. I think she got obsessed with him. She knew he was moving on. He didn't want to be with her. And and she just could not handle it and she lost it. Does that mean I think that this Ryan guy was a perfect boyfriend or husband? No, I don't believe that and I don't know that. You know, I don't know him. But what I do believe is that he did not deserve to lose his life. Now, she ended up going to trial. She got 40 years the first time in prison. She ended up having a retrial. And then in the retrial, she got life with the possibility of parole, which is a, something that you guys may not know or you may not think about. If you go to trial, okay, and you get a sentence, and you retrial it for whatever reason, you can actually get more time with the retrial. You can get less time, you can get found innocent and get let out, but you can also get more time. And that's what she got in this case. She got more time. Other things that has happened to Shayna since she's been in there, she actually married a transgender woman, a male that transitioned into a woman. She had a lot of problems trying to get her marriage license in there. She did interviews and said that she felt like that they were, you know, treating her unfairly because of her high profile case and because she wanted to marry a transgender woman. She did eventually get grant, granted that. She, she did get married to a woman while she was in jail or prison and then now they're divorced. So she got married and divorced while she's in there. This is such a bizarre thing and I hate to even say that because at the end of the day somebody lost their life. Like this young man lost his life and a mother and a father lost their son and grandparents lost their grandson. And it's just, I just, I cannot, I just feel for the family. I just, I feel for the friends like this is, and then to see those interviews and to see her sit up there and say that. And then, you know, and then her mother too. I mean, no mother, when they raise their young daughter, right? You have a little baby girl, your little daughter, you feed her, you watch her run to you, your little baby girl, you, you, you know, doctor her boo-boos, you buy her her Barbie dolls, you know, and then she grows up and then you see her all over the YouTube and the news and the media and articles and doing interviews like this, like there are no winners in this type of case. No winners. Nobody wins. Nobody comes out on top. You know, even when she got sentenced to life in prison, that's still not a win for the family or anybody because they lost their son ultimately. And it's just crazy and bizarre and upsetting and just wow, like this is very shocking. So I wanna know what you guys think about this. Have y'all heard about this before? What do you feel? Like I said, I know there's a lot of supporters of her. There are actually Facebook pages that say that she should be out that are literally dedicated to her being free. And there are Facebook pages that are dedicated to her having life in prison. So, so there are a lot of supporters and she has, 
you know, she gets donations all the time. So she has no problems with money in there. She gets letters every single day. She has really big supporters. So I want to hear you guys' opinion down below, whether you're a supporter or not. Please remember again to be kind to everyone, whether you agree with the comments down below, because I want to hear your opinions. You know, I have very good friends that I talk to about these cases and we disagree on things and we have healthy conversations. So I want to hear your healthy conversations down below. All right, my loves, as always, please do not forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.